Hey everybody and welcome to Backseat Sports. I'm Josh and that is Caleb. And we are talking about Nebraska versus Wisconsin and looking forward to Nebraska versus is Northwestern this weekend. It should be a good one. Nebraska showed a lot of signs of growth and uh, you know just betterment in general. It was a positive game for the most part. We ended up losing, but there was actually something to take away again this week, which is I mean at least something something good. I'd say um, most every part of the team played good at some point in the game, just not during the whole part of it. So there was flashes of good things. You know, the offensive line had some good pass protection in the second half. Um, obviously, Martinez was good through the whole game. So was Spielman. Um, you know, our run we didn't run the ball as much against Wisconsin, which was pretty interesting. When we did, it was pretty successful. Maurice Washington uh, showed off his skill yet again. And Ozigbo, when he got in for runs, still averaged yeah. his you know, five yards a carry. So lots of yep. good things. Um, our offense did sputter as it always, as it has the, this whole time. They had a, they had a rough go in the first half. Um, oh yeah, for sure. Only, th only three points, but the game was competitive in the first half at least, you know I mean? The yeah. defense kept Wisconsin to three in the first quarter. So we had chances and we, we had kicked off good drives as we as we do a lot of times, but penalties have yet again killed us as we're now number one. We are the best Woo! team at getting penalties in the nation. We're so good. We're so good at getting penalties. Ten point four penalties a game. That, Let's go. That makes that makes me feel pretty good, you know. Yep. Mm, nothing feeling really good no, about that one. Nothing like we're champs. Unfortunately, our offense didn't, and special teams especially, didn't put us into the best situations for our defense. Wisconsin starting field position was, I mean, amazing all game long especially in the first half and uh, it gave them a lot of chances put our defense in some really bad positions it's so tough to blame our defense when our offense and special teams has been so bad in certain in certain situations this year obviously our defense isn't isn't great it's not obviously but it's not nearly as bad as what people think it is once all three sides of the ball really start clicking just a little bit it's going to improve our defense a lot just in that aspect give our defense a lot more leeway Hopefully we can just bend and not break throughout this year. We were doing a good job of it against Wisconsin, especially in the first half, bending, not breaking, forcing field goals. Uh, that was definitely a storyline throughout the game. Yeah, we had given uh, Wisconsin their best field position um, that they've had all year uh, and on three uh, like consecutive drives. Um, our punt team in general was not good, and that led to we now have a new starting punter. and A punting change. Yeah. Interesting stuff from Frosty. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you know, anything to c try and get it going. You know, I'm a, I'm a yeah, fan of oh, at I don't this point. It. When you're losing the the field positioning battle, especially with a team that's going to be able to run the ball quite a bit, um, that's going to happen. Our fourth down conversions have also s still been bad. Not getting our fourth down. We're one and eight in fourth down. Good old one for eight on fourth down. Mm, that's great. Delicious. So, yeah. Um, a lot, Tasty. a lot of things have to change there. Probably some play calls, just execution in general. Yeah, 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 for sure. One of the most interesting things throughout the game for me was our our lack of pass protection on blitzes. I don't know if it was Martinez who wasn't recognizing it, or or the offensive line, or Frost wasn't giving him enough help in that air, in that area. I'm not sure what it was, but there was a handful of instances with completely blown pass protection specifically on blitzes yeah when wisconsin wasn't blitzing and it was especially on third down when wisconsin wasn't blitzing they really weren't very effective on getting pressure to martinez martinez had a lot of time to throw in a lot of situations and that led to over 400 passing yards for little adrian on third down we were pretty inefficient and they they really had a they were extremely effective at getting to the quarterback on third down because of blitzing. I don't know what was up with our blitz protection. Yeah, it was usually at all during the game. Yeah, we'd leave we'd usually leave a guy free on the blitz is what would happen. It was crazy. Yeah, yeah no, no it was so, just so, somebody would not pick up like one of the linebackers yeah. and it, it, they would flash it pretty clearly. It's not like they were really masking anything. That's what that's what my thing was. It's, it's not, not. It's like, not like they it really was, weren't. It wasn't trying to hide it. Free. It was just like forgotten assignments, yeah. missed assignments. Yeah, missed I, assignments. I'm not sure what was up with that. Maybe it was just. Maybe it was just credit to Wisconsin, and I maybe missed something. But from what I've been watching, I it was confusion. I, I think I it was saw, confusion. I just saw straight up confusion. Yeah. yeah. It was definitely. Yeah. And that that might be due to um, a few switch ups on the offensive line for that game. Yeah. So maybe that has to do with it, but. Yeah. At the end of the day, hopefully, if that improves, we should be pretty effective moving forward offensively, especially on third down, which has been our biggest problem this season. Third and fourth down specifically, we've been really inefficient and, and not good in general. Yeah. 
I mean, at the least, you know, like, if you're really confused, the linemen usually point at who they got. They just point out a finger at a guy. Hey, yeah. hey, pick him up, pick him up. <laughs> right, like we said, penalties have been a big, again, was a big problem. But there's just a handful of penalties, specifically one that brought back a huge Mo Washington play that cost us, you know, like 40 plus yards. It just hands to the face. It's like just uh, not stupid offensive line penalties that are costing us huge plays as well as like blocking the back penalties, costing us yards on kick returns. Those are the types of decisions these guys have to learn to make to not do and, and have the ability to not do. And we'll talk about that more when we're talking about Northwestern because uh, they're kind of the opposite of us in that in that sense. But the bright spots is when uh, whenever JD Spielman or Stanley Morgan was in single coverage, it was a uh, that was a good mm. that was a good time. Yummy. Uh, yeah, the 75 yard touchdown in the second half. Yeah, obviously oh. Martinez and Spielman have a connection. I mean, I, mean, that's, I don't think that's it, for sure. I don't think anybody wouldn't. He's so fast. He's so yeah. good. Oh my! But there was a couple times Martinez dropped it in the bread basket to like a few guys and you're just like wow that was a perfect throw just right where it needed to go it was a pretty competitive game the score didn't really reflect i feel like how competitive the game was it was literally just a few plays away from it being a potential win for nebraska that's how close it was a few tackles and a few penalties away from being a completely different game so yeah that that it's just large, it just sucks the large run that put it away yeah. by uh, yeah. taylor that sucked like, yeah, but I mean, at the end of the day, Jonathan Taylor is just a really good running back. So, like, in that yeah, sense, but it, we knew that Wisconsin was going to be able to be efficient on the ground against us. I mean, they tore us apart for 370 rushing yards. Not pretty, not pretty. They averaged 7.7 .7 in attempt. I mean, we averaged almost 5 in attempt. I think, like, 4.6. Like we've, we've, get, we've given Taylor, though, both of his career games. Your game was Jonathan last year, Taylor, again, he's a favorite year. to win the Heisman, one of the favorites to win the Heisman this year. He's a fantastic player. He's really good, and that offensive line is he's pretty good. Obviously, he lives up to the hype. He's, he's really good. He's pretty good. I, I'm not that like I don't know if you would if you were to put our running backs on oh, on, on their on. line. Yeah, no, You're I'm a sure. hater. I'm not. He's not. He's he's not nearly as impressive as Jonathan Stardale. Taylor's an elite elite running back for sure. I think so. We'll fight on that. We'll talk yeah. about that later. But um, yeah, overall, there's a lot to take away from the game. Spielman, Martinez, they played great. Offense, I mean, Maurice Washington looked fantastic. He looked exactly like what we were hoping to see. He looks like he could be a future stud, which is, I mean, amazing. You can't you can't hate on that. And, uh, I mean, I think our running backs are really solid right now. Zigbo, obviously, is a fantastic back. And Maurice Washington is really explosive. He has great hands, a good pass catcher. And so that's going to be exciting to see what he can do in the future for sure. And hopefully he can get it turned on this week. We only... Wisconsin only had 15 more yards than us. Our yardage this season, besides against Michigan, has been fantastic. It just hasn't really translated the points or success on the field, which really sucks. When you're the worst team in penalties in the whole country, I mean, that'll do it. They're not on the defensive side. They're really, they're mostly on the offensive side. It, no, it it's, is. It's mostly offensive. So yeah. if you calculate that out too, I bet our defense is pretty normal on the penalties, but our offense is just insane on on drive killers and. So I think that's that's really the biggest issue, I think. But that said, we could probably transfer to Northwestern, which it feels like a must-win game for Nebraska in a lot of ways. It just, with a team like Northwestern, who's fairly respected in, in the conference, the line's three and a half. Northwestern's known for keeping their grass pretty long on their field. Nebraska's been practicing in that long grass this week. Three and a half points is how much home field advantage is worth. So at a neutral field, Vegas would have us at an even game. So... It's really a toss-up in a lot of ways. It should be really interesting to see. Caleb, what do you got to say for yourself about this game? Is if we can hold the big play against Northwestern, uh, we have a very good chance of of being competitive and winning the game. Uh, I felt like last week it was kind of a ticking time bomb with Wisconsin. I felt like we did a good job for a lot of it of, of keeping down like the big plays. We've shot ourselves in the foot multiple times against Northwestern um, with giving up big plays when... The, the team isn't really like deserving of it, but uh, like with Purdue with those big runs, uh, Northwestern has done that to us in the past with against Mike Riley, and so that's kind of yeah. one thing that I've I've definitely well, circled. Good news is they're only averaging 55 yards a game. Larkin has had a pretty good career so far. Last year he averaged six yards a carry as a freshman, and this year he was averaging about five yards a carry, and then he had to quit the team because of medical reasons, which is really unfortunate. You hate to see that. I mean Scott Frost was talking about that as well in his uh, in his presser, but. 
um, at the end of the day, uh, we have the chance to really control the clock in this game with uh, our running game. Hopefully, being able to, I think we should have the ability to, to control this clock against Northwestern, force Northwestern into some longer third downs, hopefully force some turnovers, which we haven't been very efficient at doing this season so far. But there's a lot of positives for Nebraska heading into this matchup for sure. Yeah, I don't think they're very, they're not very fast on the edges. And I think with Nebraska speed, we'll have a lot of chances to exploit that uh, with, with Washington. Uh, you know, they have a pretty decent front seven. Um, but I think if you can escape that, um, their secondary is very ex exposable. They're averaging like 200, 235 yards passing per game. And that's pretty high. And like and 133 rushing yards too. So it's not like they're, they're really cracking down on anything um, super, super well. The biggest question is how much can our offense score? How much are the mistakes we make going to inhibit us? Nebraska has been playing itself, I think, for a few weeks now, and we've been losing by a big margin. And so, yeah, Nebraska to start winning games, it's not just playing against, you know, we can score points against any of the teams that we've played against. How can we get crack 30 points? You know, Northwestern's not averaging much more points than we are. We're averaging like, tw we're averaging like 23, and they're averaging a little more than 25. So they're not going to score a ton of points. Like, it's like I said earlier, Northwestern is, and Nebraska are on opposite sides of the spectrum when it comes to penalties. Nebraska is last, dead last in the country in penalties. Northwestern is six. Nebraska averages 10 penalties a game, over 10 penalties a game. And Northwestern has 16 on the season. So <laughs> this could be a, a that this will be a deciding factor probably in this game. If we have over like 100 plus yards in penalties, and Northwestern only has like 30, which is definitely possible based on how the season's gone so far. I mean, that could decide the game right there. From what I've seen, the improvement I've seen, especially with us scoring 24 points, that's the second best defense we right. faced this and year. And playing besides terrible Michigan. in the first half too. Which, yeah. You know, so I mean, most of our points are put up in the second half. So there's a lot of positive. Northwestern's had a really weird season so far. Yeah. Um, they they beat Purdue and Michigan State. But they've lost to Duke and Akron, and then they also they had a close game against Michigan. So they've had a really weird season where they played great against Michigan. They beat Michigan State, beat Purdue, but then they had a really bad losses against Duke and Akron. So um, it's kind of hard to to know what's going to happen with Northwestern, what team you're going to get from Northwest, you know, out of Northwestern. Um, and there's there's obviously a chance for Nebraska to win this game. So there's a lot of hope moving forward. I think Nebraska should be pretty excited about this game and hope for a lot of potential improvement and we might be able to get our first dub of the year and i think it'd be really big for nebraska to get a dub in this game in theory there's a chance we could still make a bowl game if we have some big turnaround you know i mean hey yeah. who knows i mean you know we, we have seven games left we win six of them we make a bowl game so yeah well, what's who knows yeah what's what's 85 percent you know winning what's you know yeah you know prove the haters are wrong yeah. espn <laughs> You guys are haters. Yeah, I don't, that's all I gotta say. I think Nebraska wins this game. That's that's yeah. my prediction. What do you have to say? Well, yeah, what's your prediction, man? Yeah, I think I think Nebraska is going to win this game. Uh, they're going to win 35-28. I think we're finally going to see okay. them crack the the point uh, barrier a little bit. I, uh, <laughs> for, for, yeah, the glass ceiling of 30 points. I think yeah. we finally do that. Our offense is going to be able to score um, a touchdown, at least a touchdown a quarter in the first half. So that'll be nice to see. The second quarter has been really killing us in the points. Get the kinks worked out. I think we'll have less penalties. And I think our defense is going to be able to, because their running is, is poor, we're going to be able to run some different packages and be able to blitz some guys at them. Um, and actually, we're going to be decently effective on defense on certain drives and be able to give our offense a, a lot better chance of winning than having to play you know, almost perfect and score. Okay, I can, I can see that. I think the the game's gonna be a little bit slower than people might think, um, which because I think we're gonna try to run the ball and control the clock, like take Wisconsin's formula and uh, use it on Northwestern. At least I hope so. And with that with that said, I think we're gonna win 28 to 24. It's gonna be a little bit close, a little bit tight. I think we come out with the win at the end of the day. Maybe that's just optimistic Husker fan talking, but I think we've seen a lot of improvement these last few weeks, and I'm hoping that we see the, the, that come into fruition this week and finally get the dub against Northwestern. I think we have the pieces that, that can make that happen, and our defense will be able to play well enough to get us in position to win the game. Hopefully our offense doesn't have a horrible start like it did last week, obviously. So, but yeah, I mean, that's what that is. I hope you guys enjoyed the video talking Northwestern, Wisconsin, and all of Husker football. Um, a lot more is to come on the channel. 
and we appreciate all the comments and uh, all the support that you guys have been giving, which is awesome. But as always, guys, I'm Josh. That is Caleb. This has been Daxi Sports, and we will see you next time. Peace. Buried on the depth chart by Mike Riley multiple times. His whole career. Yeah, yeah, his whole career, he's just been buried on the depth chart, kind of forgotten, and he's battled, battled, battled to be the best back. And he even molded and changed himself, and he was one super excited about You Scott can Frost tell he it. put a lot of work.